So the last report is Songa IBD steps toward a sustainable urban habitat. Speaker Richard Nemeth, Principal Con Pedersen Fox, United States. Richard Nemeth has 20 years of experience as a project architect and project manager. Since joining Con Pedersen Fox Associates in 1998, he has worked on a wide range of project types throughout the United States, Europe, Asia, Africa, and Australia, including office complexes and high-rise commercial towers, res residential and hotel developments, and master planning for new sustainable cities. Your report, please. Thank you very much. So this is more of the urban habitat talk of the Council of Tall Buildings. And uh, just to talk about how we made a sustainable city, uh, the, the first uh, point about sustainability, of course, is economic sustainability. Why build a new city, especially when you have Seoul so nearby? Songdo is about 25 miles away from downtown Seoul. So uh, the, the Yellow Sea Basin, of course, uh, contains a lot of the activity in China, Japan, Korea. And uh, with the new Incheon Airport and, and a, a, even a larger addition planned, uh, it's, it's well situated to be in the center of, of, of this uh, entire economic region. So uh, again, this is the, the Incheon Airport. I'm sure many of you flew in and out of here. And uh, the existing bridge that you probably took came this way into Seoul. And a new bridge was just completed to this area here, which is Songdo, which is all landfill. Now, the area that is in the orange here is, a, is about 15,000 acres. Uh, and the darker yellow in the center is the part that I'm speaking about today, which is the Songdo IBD. It's about 1,500 acres. So this is about what it looked like uh, when we started our work. We were hired about 10 years ago uh, by a consortium led by Gale International and POSCO, ENC. And they approached uh, KPF and Arup to help uh, design and engineer this site in the center. At the time we were hired, it was still water, mostly water. So we began by programming it, and uh, we took some reference from Corbusier's uh, uh, ship, where, where because a ship is essentially a floating city, has to be self-sufficient, it has to contain all of the program pieces that make up a complete city. And uh, arranging the program became a choice of a very ordered plan like this, or uh, what we call a varied diet. This is a diet that has a whole variety of food types, and it makes for a more interesting meal. And uh, looking at, at, at issues like density and, and the mixed use, uh, we, we turn to references. The European cities are wonderful at mixing work and live and play and recreation and food all together in one place. So uh, we, we thought that um, although there is a need for office districts to be connected to office districts and residential neighborhoods to be connected to residential districts, uh, we thought overlapping these areas created these wonderful areas of synergy, and some of the most exciting parts of the cities often happen where these different districts overlap. So when you apply the many districts that cover everything from education to office to residential, you'll, you'll start to see these, uh, these wonderful zones of overlapping, like for instance, the, uh, this area, these red zones here, which are the canal blocks. Uh, which are a place for people to go from work as they transition to uh, their living areas. They move through these um, and activate these at off times of the day, in the evenings, happy hours, dinner time. And uh, you'll see the, the actual plan itself laid down here by use. So uh, in, in laying out the city, of course, the, many of the ideal cities around the world are these utopias, which are perfect geometries, perfect layouts of program and, and function. And I think we always looked at Songdo as much more of an atopia, sort of fighting the nature of the pure city, and, and more like a collage of, of different places that, that make up an interesting urban environment. And uh, one, one of, the, one of the, the phrases we used along the development of the city was something we called compressed evolution. In uh, many of the cities, like Paris, uh, great places evolved over time and, and were selected out of many places that failed um, to become special, to help define the city. And I think every city has these. Seoul has many of these places. 
So we didn't have that opportunity in Songdo because the whole city had to be designed in instantly. Uh, so we borrowed some ideas from other cities of, of places that had stood the test of time. Uh, and these are just a few examples of, of the many ideas that we, we tried to reinterpret. Uh, the Park Avenue with this wonderful green band down the center of it in New York. Uh, the the uh, government iconic areas uh, like the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. The Sydney Opera House, this wonderful uh, cultural center out on the water. The pocket parks of Savannah, these beautiful scaled residential pocket parks. <clears throat> Central Park, a large urban green area carved out of the densest area of the city. Venice, which has these, this wonderful network of canals that allows you to navigate and, and also create a wonderful atmosphere for pedestrians. And we tried to reinterpret many of these um, iconic areas in our, in our city. So uh, the density, um, uh, we found uh, that in order for a city to truly be sustainable, it has to be a pedestrian city, so you're not totally reliant on public transportation or automobiles. And uh, the threshold for an FAR, which becomes a pedestrian city, we have found to be around two, two and a half. Um, and, uh, a pedestrian city then is, is also defined by the distance you have to walk to, to get to different parts of the city. So the, the distance between a, a, a residential area being able to walk to work and stopping to shop along the way, uh, we, we set up a series of thresholds which, which, um, which allowed in the immediate area of pedestrian movement to have a certain uh, quality of function and variety of function um, or access by a bicycle uh, through bicycle paths that were distributed throughout the city uh, or even public transportation allows you kind of a large encompassing area. And try, we tried to program the city such that within different modes of transportation you had access to different elements. So the, the Korean zoning that, um, that defines many of the Korean cities, especially the new cities, is, is a level zoning. It sets an FAR, which for us was about two and a half, and uh, it, it uh, sets the height of all these buildings at, at a level. Um, and what we wanted to do was to graduate the density toward the center, to concentrate the people toward the middle of the city. So uh, largely at the government's request, we, we reinterpreted a zoning system that allowed for higher FARs toward the center of the city. And here's a zoning, uh, an FAR map that shows that in the darker red, the higher FARs, which in some points exceed 10. Uh, and, uh, and, the, and the outer areas of this uh, district uh, get all the way down to one. The average of the overall city is still two and a half. And uh, here's, here's an illustration you can see with the dashed red lines that shows what we call the tent city. Now at the center of this tent, we carved out uh, a, uh, an area that became the central focus for the culture and for the recreation. So there's a central park that has cultural elements in it, a concert hall, a museum, an ecotarium, canals, and uh, let's see, here we go. The public transportation system networking this together is, uh, is a, an extensive bus system, of course, with bus stops distributed throughout the city, and a subway that connects down to Incheon, which then connects back to Seoul, so we're connected through a public transportation uh, subway system. Bicycle paths, which are networked throughout the city and designed into the sidewalks. A canal, which uh, has the navigable boats that connect the cultural elements, starting at the convention center, past the ecotarium, past the uh, museum, government center, all the way to the orchestra hall, which is at the end. And uh, this different streetscapes, the variety of streetscapes I'm going to go into in a second. Uh, and laying a public uh, transportation infrastructure map, uh, you can see that there's, there's great access to public infrastructure. All of the parking in the city is underground, so there's no, there's no visible parking above ground. And uh, we did very extensive um, analysis of all the different street types uh, and, and took, uh, took great pains to separate the, the pedestrian traffic from the bicycle traffic um, and the automobile traffic. A section showing some of the greenscapes. And an example, this actually is probably in Central Park, not necessarily on the street. Uh, so for the infrastructure of the city, um, we have a whole variety of, of infrastructural systems. Uh, 
there's a district hot water system underground which generates electricity uh, from a power plant and hot water from a power plant and the hot water then is used by the buildings. We have a, um, a gray water, every building uh, is required to have a, a gray water collection and reuse system. And the gray water can then be used for uh, watering plants or flushing toilets. And there's a black water collection system as well, uh, which you can see in these two orange locations, this one here. This one here, the black water, which is basically the sewage, is all collected in a central uh, processing plant and is redistributed throughout the city as gray water. Uh, and methane is captured from that um, sewage as well and, and turned back into energy. Uh, there's a vacuum, automated vacuum waste system under the streets as well, which collects the waste centrally to to reduce or eliminate the need for garbage trucks or garbage piled up in the street. So uh, there are a series of green spaces that we layer on top of each other in order to connect um, passages for pedestrians that are through blocks uh, in addition to the ones that we looked at along the streets. So you can see the connection, the network of these little uh, parkways that allow you to move from the central park all the way back to the, to the residential neighborhood blocks. Uh, and then uh, the, the, the streets running different ways act uh, slightly differently. The, the canals, which we had mentioned before as one of these areas of synergy, connect through uh, these uh, green streets. <clears throat> so they're, they're meant to encourage people walking back to the canal system. And then uh, some of the, the, the larger green streets connect back to the Central Park we talked about, and then there's a Park Avenue, a promenade along the water. So all of these different green systems overlay on top of each other to create a green network of a variety of types of streetscapes, a variety of types of urban spaces that uh, ultimately connect you back to the center of the city. And the Central Park, which is a 100-acre park in the center, uh, is a park that tries to capture some of the essence of the Korean landscapes. There, there are mountains that, um, that uh, pick up some of the characters of the eastern coast of, of Korea and their wetlands where the land actually um, slides right into the water. Now, uh, to make the park more sustainable, because parks tend to be water hogs, uh, most of the planting is, is um, well, all of the planting is Korean-based, and, and the majority of the planting is very low maintenance. It doesn't need water outside of, of the regular water system, and the re regular rain, sorry. And then here's a picture looking down onto that park. You can see it's mostly constructed. There's another view of the park. <clears throat> so the canal itself um, is salt water, and it's brought in and replenished from the Yellow Sea uh, every, depending on, <clears throat> I think it's about every two weeks or so. But it does a couple of things. One, it, you don't need fresh water to fill it. And two, it, because we're replenishing it, it doesn't have to be filtered it can actually just drain back into the Yellow Sea. And uh, another advantage is it doesn't freeze since it's salt water. Uh, and you can take, uh, the, there's a tour going out Thursday to Songdo. You can take a little electric boat that goes throughout the whole canal system. It's about two miles long. Um, <clears throat> so some of the irrigation that is necessary in that city we did by collecting rainwater that percolates through the soil and we capture it and store it in these large these are like egg crates uh, that are buried underneath the landscape and they hold mostly water um, and then we can pump the water back out of those egg crates uh, in the dry seasons and water the plants that do need irrigation. Here's an image walking to the park. Some children in one of the fountains. So. Uh, Songdo was one of the early lead pilot programs in the United States. We went down to Washington and, and they were very excited to apply this uh, neighborhood development, which is a new lead certification, to the city, um, although they said it was a little bit larger than they typically would, would have approached. They were looking for neighborhoods, not cities. Uh, but in, in, the, in the client directive uh, somewhere around that time, which is about five years ago, the client um, decided that all of the buildings in Songdo would be lead certified. So this was the first building open, the Songdo Convention Center. 
And we just completed phase two of the design, which hopefully will be built soon. And now here's a series of images of what's actually completed on the city. It's about a third completed. Um, <clears throat> and the next wave of development is starting soon. This is currently the tallest tower in Korea. Uh, still in a construction, not occupied yet. Um, it's just over 305 meters. <clears throat> you can see at the end of the canal is the uh, Songdo Convention Center, the phase one. Phase two will continue that arc to the other side. And we try to capture some of the characters, these beautiful little soul streets. I hope many of you have had a chance to wander around through these wonderful little alleyways that are made up of a composition of many different materials. <clears throat> so this is what I refer to as the North Canal, one of these areas of synergy that's meant to be the restaurant zone and the eating and the drinks. We introduced a street edge, a street wall, on many of the streets to encourage pedestrian activity and retailing. <clears throat> and we tried to create in the, in, the, in the super blocks, which are most of the residential blocks, we tried to create urban spaces that, that would break the scale down to be a more, a more intimate scale for the people who live there. This is the um, Songdo School. <clears throat> it's a school for about 2,000 students in the center. All told, there are 13 schools in Songdo. And the Songdo Convention Center. And here's what it looks like now. You can see that the Central Park in the center, the, to the right, are, uh, is, is mostly completed the residential district and neighborhoods. Some of the mixed use buildings down here uh, toward the center. You can see some of the office buildings already up. What largely is left to be developed is the rest of the office district and the whole west side up to that golf course. And when completed, it should look something like that. So I hope uh, if, if you have time that. Many of you can head out on Thursday for a tour, which goes, to, it goes up in the observation deck of the tower, and it goes to the Central Park, and it looks at the North Canal, and shows you the convention center. It's, it's, uh, it's interesting to see how the design now is transformed. Uh, we were hired in 2002, so this is basically nine years later what, what has been done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, anyone has question? Okay. Yeah. Well, Mr. Nemes, your project is without doubt very modern and global. But if there, there are, if they, there were some protest about there is no, no, no room for local identity or regional identity. How do you protect your plan? Well, I would, I would say that the, it, is, it is a new city, there's no doubt. And, and it lacks hundreds in, of, of years or even thousands of years of evolution in the case of some of the cities in, in this region. Um, <clears throat> we, we try to, at many turns to try and introduce um, characters of, of, that we thought were, were really important in, in the Korean society and as well as the Korean character of some of the architecture and, and urban space, we try to introduce that into the design. So, for instance, the, the uh, First World Towers, um, it may look like a jumble of towers, but the reality is we, we broke those buildings down into, into um, separate communities. There are four individual towers, and around each of those towers is a courtyard, which has a sub-community. And then within each of the buildings, there's a sub-community within that. So, and, and then, of course, in the Central Park, we, we tried to use a landscape that was, that was Korean in nature uh, and also um, introduce um, scales of building elements like in the North Canal that were appropriate for the scale of, 
of some of the streets of Seoul. But <clears throat> in in terms of in terms of you know what makes this city Korean, I think it'll probably take about another hundred years, <laughs> and it will become a very Korean city. It's really the people that make up a city. Um, Okay, another question? Okay, thank you very much.